I'm sorry my voice is hoarse. I, I, I did not expect it. this. It only happened this morning. Because probably of some of these sleepless nights in the past uh, days. By the way, Pastor Orly is the mission president of Romblon uh, Mission. Yeah, I'm happy for him. Now, this time, our presenter is one of the faculty members of the College of Theology. He graduated from Mountain View College and... Uh, you know, because of his eagerness, he came to Luzon and he studied at Ayas. And presently, he is the chair of uh, the theology department here at AUP. His field is, his line is in systematic theology. And so this morning, we're very happy to uh, listen to Pastor Daniel Conejos, an ordained pastor, of course. And... Uh, he will be talking about the role of the Holy Spirit in urban ministry. Let us now give our undivided attention to Pastor Cornelius. Thank you. Good noon. I'm hoping that you are not yet very hungry and just waiting for the end of the presentation for lunch. This is what personally I am convicted and convinced that the, the power behind the work is actually the Holy Spirit. Okay? So I, when this topic was, uh, when we were given opportunity to choose a topic, I chose this one. Because for the past five years, I have been examining my ministry and reflecting whether I am the one using the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit is using me. Okay, so, because that is the, the challenge, especially in urban ministry, considering with the issues that was brought out by our good brother here about the situation, the real situation in urban context. Okay? I will start with basic deduction. And in a, a, actually, in systematic theology, we employ two methodologies inductive and the deductive method. The inductive is we are going to examine the small details in order to reach a generalization. And then the deductive, we are going to start with the bigger generalization and go to the smallest uh, information. And mostly, beliefs in God is deductive. I am not studying the Bible in order to believe in God. I believe in God, and then I'm studying the Bible and discover and find more support and encouragement with my established belief in God. Because if you are going to study the Bible without believing in God, you will be not a believer. Now, let's go to the... the uh, deduction that is in our fundamental beliefs. Fundamental beliefs number five. I, I, I hope that you are familiar with that one. Okay? God, the eternal spirit, was active with the Father and the Son in creation, incarnation, and redemption. Okay? This is fundamental beliefs number five. Okay? I am telling my students to internalize the fundamental beliefs. And then, the same from that fundamental beliefs, we are convinced and we declare that he draws and convicts human being. So it is the Holy Spirit who will what? Convict. Sometimes when we are making reports after evangelism, I was able to baptize several people converted people. No, we cannot convert people. It is the Holy Spirit who will what? Convert. Okay? According to Paul, when they had a quarrel in, in Corinth, he said that, why is it that there are several parties here? One following Peter, and then Apollos, and then Paul. Don't you know that somebody was preaching, somebody was watering, but it was the Holy Spirit who what? Who made the seed to germinate. So that is in our fundamental beliefs. Still, fundamental beliefs number five. Okay? And then 
another from that one, from that belief. He extends spiritual gifts, this was this, uh, mentioned partly by Pastor Fernando, to the church. And then I like the word, empowers it to bear witness to Christ. So our witness is through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we are confused. What is important, training or the Holy Spirit? According to Dr. Havin, there was a defense in Ayas that uh, the, the, the one who was about to graduate says that training. But actually, when you survey the phenomenon in the book of Acts, they don't have training. Okay? But they were used by the Holy Spirit. But now we could not hire a pastor who does not have a diploma. So do not use the New Testament context to argue that, Pastor, I can be hired even without diploma because I have the Holy Spirit. Because we could not confirm what kind of Holy Spirit that is in you. Okay, so, so we are now, this is still in their fundamental beliefs. And then, another one here. Okay, it is through the work of the Holy Spirit. That God is personally involved and active in the believer's life. It is through the work of the Holy Spirit that God the Father, God the Son, has a connection with us. This is according to these theologians, a Baptist theologian, Millard Erickson. And then... I have here another one here from an evangelical theologian. He said that soteriology must be viewed theologically, that is, as a work of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So salvation that must be viewed theologically as the work of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, consistent with our fundamental Beliefs. This is from the Reformed Dogmatics by this guy. Okay? You are taking notes? Okay? The Holy Spirit will guide you. Don't worry. Okay? In this presentation, I will use the inductive method of looking at the phenomenon of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. And after that, I will state a broad generalization of the role of the Holy Spirit generally in evangelization and particularly in urban ministry. So this is a phenomenological uh, inductive study looking at the phenomenology of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. At first I was thinking of looking at the whole Bible, but I cannot, that cannot be done in what? In 30 minutes, so I said I will focus in the book of Acts. Because you know, a lot of theologians, evangelicals, and even us, are convinced that the book of Acts should not be the Acts of the Apostles. should be the Acts of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the Apostles. That should be the proper title, but we follow the title, Acts of the Apostles. But it should be the Act of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the apostles. Okay, let's start with Acts 1 verse 4. Okay? Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Okay, what was the promise of the Father? The empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So wait for the time that is appointed. Okay? Wait. Before you go, you have to wait. Sometimes we go ahead without receiving the empowerment. So there was a time that was appointed and there was a place that was appointed, Jerusalem. And according to the promise, on the day of Pentecost, they received the empowerment. And this was mentioned in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power. You know, I inquire a lot of opinions of theologians about the power and then from their, uh, of their reflections from the word that was used, dunamis. That is the same word that we have dynamite now. 
Okay? Dunamis. The power. And then, what is the effect? When uh, you receive power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and then the consequence, you see the, the pattern there? You receive power, and then the consequence is, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into all the world, not only in highly urbanized cities, in all the world, even the natives there up in the mountain of Binduros, you could not just win them without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So this is the, uh, the instructions. Okay? The power there, according to some theologians, this is a supernatural power that the believers receive from the Holy Spirit. This power is for witnessing and that includes power within, power to proclaim the gospel, and power to lead others to God. But sometimes, do not be discouraged if you can encounter people who will not believe in you. You just proclaim. It is the Holy Spirit who will what? Convict that person. Okay? Now, there are people who can, that we can lead to Christ. Because evangelism is persuading others to receive Christ as their personal Savior. But that persuasion depends on the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Okay, this is from our very own Bible commentary, volume 6, 124. Okay? And then... That empowerment, according to our Bible commentary, is still available today. Followers of Christ today are similarly called to bear personal witness to the works, teachings of Jesus, to the purpose of, to the purpose of God to save the world through His Son and the effectiveness of the gospel in their own hearts. So that's why now we have the so-called power of what winning testimony. How the Holy Spirit brought changes in your self. Okay? Empowerment through the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Acts chapter 2 verse 4. And then, And there were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them a tyrant. This was during the day of Pentecost. And then after that, we see the preaching of Peter. But actually, a lot of interpreters agree that it was not only the apostles who were speaking. It was not only the apostles who were proclaiming. All those congregations there, there were maybe 120 of them there, who received the empowerment of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit gave them a terrans. So immediately, Verse 8 was fulfilled. You shall be my witnesses. When they receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes we are thinking that uh, the Adventists call this, this is the outpouring during the Lateran. Because sometimes there is a mentality of the Adventists that when you are baptized, you receive the early rain. Partial. After the word, you will receive what? The complete. My brethren, the Holy Spirit is a person, is not something. You could not receive 50% of the Holy Spirit. Either you have the Holy Spirit or you don't have the Holy Spirit. What was received was the empowerment. That's why Dr. Rodriguez says that if we are waiting for the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we are not waiting for something that we don't have. We have the Holy Spirit, but we need the fellowship with the Holy Spirit so that He can empower us to witness the gift of the Holy Spirit cannot be separated from the Holy Spirit itself. So what we are waiting actually to make us available so that He can empower us. But we have already the Holy Spirit. The apostles at the time, they had already the Holy Spirit. They cannot believe Jesus Christ. They cannot confess Jesus without the Holy Spirit. Even in the gospel when Peter confessed, you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus replied, you are blessed 
Because that is not inform you by what? Human instrumentality, but by my Father. Of course, that is true, the Holy Spirit. So, and then Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Okay. And when they had prayed, the place where they assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Have you, have you experienced in our prayer meeting that the Holy Spirit descended to us and the building was shaken? Not yet. <laughs> in that phenomenon, the building was shaken. They were all filled with what? The empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And they speak the word of God. They shared the witness with what? Boldness. I am not I will not include studying what does boldness means there, but the, uh, I think we can say that the eagerly, actively witness for the Lord after that they will impact, they were empowered. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, you cannot hide that one. It will come out. You will be talking about that one. You could not hold that excitement of talking about God when you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. This is Acts chapter 4 verse 31. Let's go to others. And this is a very nice story here. Acts chapter 8. Okay. Now as the angel of the Lord speak to Philip saying, Arise, go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. I, I like that term. Now... The angel of the Lord. You know this phenomenon of angel of the Lord is common in the Old Testament. But if you look at the next statement, okay? She said, Acts chapter 8, verse 29, And the Spirit said to Philip, Go over and join his chariot. So you see there the parallel there? The angel of the Lord in Old Testament and in the Lord, the Holy Spirit, and then uh, the angel of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. But that is not my point here. I'm just describing the phenomenon, the story. This is the story of the conversion of that eunuch. So if you see urban and influential people, maybe the eunuchs was really an evidence of what? An urban target because the eunuchs was a courier of the queen. Okay? He was not an ordinary person. Hmm? He, be, he can be compared to what? Uh, Justice Secretary Aguirre. Okay? Courier. Hindi rin siguro taga-timpla lang ng kape yung courier eh. Okay? Okay? Treasurer. Yeah, treasurer. Queen Candice, treasurer. And you can imagine that Philip was there. He was one of the deacons filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he went there. And then the Holy Spirit directed him, you go to the south, to that road there, and you can find somebody there. And when he found, and he looked at somebody who was reading the scroll of Isaiah, the Holy Spirit told him, you join him in the chariot. And then Philip said, Did, do you understand what you are reading? And then the eunuch said, how could I understand without someone to explain me? It's really different from the approach of our lay persons now. That when they approach the people, they invited for a debate. You can only ask the correct questions if you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. You know? <laughs> Philip was able to connect with that man. Did you understand? Now, when we approach people, do you keep the Sabbath? Why is it that you are keeping Sunday? You are only being an effective and good witness if you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Because you can make the right questions. Okay? And then after discussion, the eunuch said, Now there is water. Hmm? There is also a phenomenon in the Bible that urban evangelism will not wait for five years. The, the eunuch was baptized. Maybe less than one hour. Huh? It's done one hour. He came to the place that there was water. 
And then Ayunok said, There is water. What hinders me to be baptized? And Philip said, Do you believe? Yes. And they, both of them went down and baptized. And when they came out of the water, Philip was not by the Holy Spirit. Take note of that one. He was not by the Holy Spirit. And the eunuch did not see him anymore. You see that phenomenon in the book of Acts? How the Holy Spirit works? Okay? Look at this one. Now when they come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went his way rejoicing. The eunuch did not, was not surprised. Was that an aswang? Where is he? <laughs> you know, I was reflecting that one for so long, this story, and I wondered how in that phenomenon that after baptism, the one who baptized him was not gone. <laughs> yeah. Prepared by the Holy Spirit. Who prepared the eunuchs for Bible study? The Holy Spirit. Okay, sometimes when we are reporting our work, oh, we are so proud we were able to establish this one because this was the things that we have done. Sometimes the Holy Spirit cannot use us because we are equipped with methodology. So the Holy Spirit, okay, you can survive with your own. So maybe you, do not, you don't need me much. You know, missiologists now, they are astonished. The result of the New Testament evangelization, that until now, it is not duplicated. There was a report before in Mindanao. Pentecost was revived. They baptized 300,000. Because they were giving Tinapato the Manubo there, and the Bilaan there, and the mountain. Hmm? I know that one because uh, I worked there before. Hmm? Sardinas. But Philip was found at Asutos and passing through. He preached in all cities till he came to Caesarea. Who directed Philip? The Holy Spirit. Okay? Our time is limited, so I will not talk a lot about this one. And then the experience of Paul at conversion. Conversions of soul. And Ananias went his way because he was told in a vision that soul is there. Residing there, you go to that place. And then when Ananias went there at the house, and laying his hands on him, I said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know what was the consequence? Let's go to immediately to the consequence here. 9 verse 20. Immediately, this referring to Paul. Immediately. He preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. Remember Saul persecuted the way, the group of Jesus Christ because they could not accept that he is the son of God because the Jewish people believe in strict monotheism. There's only one God, that is the father. How could he have a son? Okay? Because that is dangerous. If he have a son, then he has also a wife because how could have we a son with a mother, without a mother? Immediately he preached about the Son of God. Consequence of the empowerment. Acts 9 verse 31, then, this is now including the congregation. Then the churches throughout Judea, Galilee, Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. How the church multiplied at the time? Through the empowerment, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes now, you know, when I was a pastor in Sambuanga City, I had uh, a strategy. 
we are going to put another congregation there. And the next congregation, I told the, the board, probably we are going to increase 50% of our membership after five years. Later on, I realized that sometimes we ambition numbers without going to the Holy Spirit to find those people who are candidates for the kingdom. Because sometimes we are bringing people in the church who are not for the kingdom of God. And they are causing us a lot of troubles. They were multiplied through the comfort, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Acts, this is another story here. Okay. Angel of God visited Cornelius. Verse 5, instructed Cornelius to call Peter. Verse 19 and 20, the Holy Spirit instructed Peter to go with the servants of Cornelius. And then 10 verse 44, while Peter was preaching there, the audience, the relatives of Cornelius received the evidence that the Holy Spirit is with them. And then they were what? They were baptized there. First yeah. International. First international elite conversion according to Dr. Habib. Imagine Cornelius. What, what was the work of Cornelius? He was a Roman centurion. High ranking. 20 times than ordinary soldier. Now we have difficulty converting a lot of what? Uh, people who have even uh, barangay captain is very difficult to work. <laughs> During our field school in Banawi, I had one student who are able to bring a barangay captain for baptism. I do not know what is happening now if that barangay captain is still there. Okay? But, you know, this is an evidence. First elect conversion, Cornelius, who worked through the Holy Spirit. Peter will not come there. <laughs> because she is true. When he was there, he said, you know, you know pretty well that it is forbidden for me as a Jew. To mingle with you. But the Holy Spirit informed me. God informed me. That I will not call anybody what unclean or common. There is no partiality according to him. And that is true. The Holy Spirit. And then he reported all this one. And Peter report this close. That it was the Holy Spirit. Who directed him. To go to Cornelius house. When he made a report in Jerusalem, okay, it was the Holy Spirit who directed him to go to Cornelius' house. Because without the Holy Spirit, I don't believe that Peter will go there. Okay? So the Holy Spirit here. Acts 11 verse 24. For, this is about Barnabas. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. You know, Barnabas was not really a good preacher. No, no. The book of Acts did not mention him as uh, preaching, is it? But he was an encourager and then he gave, is it? Charitable work. And he was used by the Holy Spirit. And many people were added to the church. You know, we are also adding people to the church. But we need to examine whether that is through the Holy Spirit or through our what? Try treating them so that they will be baptized. After baptism, where are they? God. <laughs> because this is, uh, see, I am not against goal like what the president says. But this is what is happening. The pastor is giving goals. Sometimes the goal is beyond the capability of what? It's not realistic. So the pastor will say, okay, I will hire a layman who will work. And then the layman, the pastor will say, layman, every month you need to produce people to be baptized. 
So the layman will do also everything that he can. <laughs> At the end of the month, there is baptism. <laughs> no problem with the reports of baptism. There is no problem with our reporting of baptism. There was a time that the union in Mindanao reported to have more than one million. And then later on, we realized, where is that one million? And then we make a church audit. I was still a pastor in Sambuanga. I look at the record of Sambuanga City, the church there. There were more than 1,000. But every Sabbath I am counting. Even though I am preaching, I think to hit count. There are only least, um, about 300 people who are going to church every Saturday, including visitors. I found out that there are people there who we could no longer find. You know, after the audit, we found out that the membership of Southern, uh, South Philippine Union Conference is only a little bit over, what, 200,000. Not exactly 1 million. Okay? Acts 13, verse 2. The Holy Spirit instructed, separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work of which I have called them. And then Acts 13, verse 4, the Holy Spirit sends Paul and Barnabas to a center according to Pastor Fernando. The capital is Papos and then what? Cyprus there. You know, it was here in this place that the proconsul was converted. Okay? It was in this place also that Paul had an encounter with what? This is the name of the proconsul who was already worked by the Holy Spirit, and he invited Paul and Barnabas so that he can hear further explanation. But while he was there, the Paul was there, there was a sorcerer there. The name was Barhisos, translated as Elimas, a false prophet, opposed Barnabas and Saul. Hmm? False prophet. Okay? You know, and Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, rebuked the false prophet. How? By intently looking at the false prophet without any words. He looked intently. And then after I said, of the devil. And then he mentioned. You know, in tactfulness, Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. So do not follow his rebuke. Because sometimes we are creating trouble when we are evangelizing. Because we are following everything that is there. And after the rebuke, Acts 13 verse 12, the proconsul believed he was established. This is in Acts chapter 13 verse 19 to 10. Oh, these are now the generalization. Those are the phenomenon. Now let's go to the generalization. The first generalization. Resulting from reflections. And maybe you can make my, your reflections. Possess the disciples that church were possessed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not only moving them, but they were possessed by the Holy Spirit. They were not only moved, they were possessed by the Holy Spirit. You know, it's very difficult now to make a program for a spiritual session so that everybody will be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Because there are two extremes now. The Pentecostal are doing that one. Okay? And then the other evangelicals, they are distancing that there is no more gift of the Holy Spirit. Now. The Adventists waiting for the latter end. <laughs> so, so, very far. <laughs> hmm? I think we need to go back to the experience in the book of Acts, how they were possessed by the Holy Spirit. According to Dr. Rodriguez, when he reviewed, actually there are four books written by Adventists about the Holy Spirit. I have a copy of one, and Dr. Rodriguez reviewed one of that. That is written by Ron Closet. He said that sometimes we are thinking that conditions like what the apostles were doing, what the brethren were doing at the time. Those are conditions. Sometimes we are thinking that conditions are formulas. 
that if we are followed, they, are, they are followed with intensity, after that the Holy Spirit will come. No conditions are not formula. They are lifestyles designed so that we can fellowship with Christ. They are not formulas. Okay? So do not think that, well, I have fasted many days and I am abstaining from all meats, including BG meat, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit will come to me. Hmm? They are not formulas. They are conditions so that you can fellowship with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus Christ, and then the Jesus, the Holy Spirit will come to us, possess us. You know, in my ministry, I have not encountered a real person who is demon possessed. Praise God for that one. I have not encountered. There was one time that I was called, Pastor, there is somebody there is possessed by the Holy Spirit. And I was shivering. Wow, I mean, this is my first time. I read the Bible and said, well, Jesus Christ is stronger than the demon. So I went there and immediately the woman was crying, <laughs> sobbing like that one. Immediately I hold the hand, stronger. <laughs> because I'm anticipating that, because according to them, one of the characteristics of a demon possessed is strong. So I hold very strong. She cried more. <laughs> okay? I found out that she was not demon possessed. But that woman was pregnant. And doesn't know how to tell her mother that she is pregnant. Okay? But, you know, we study about the gift of prophecy. You know, Ellen White, we, I am convinced that when she was under the position of the Holy Spirit, she manifested what? Extraordinary strength, is it? Okay? Not physical strength. When the church and individual is possessed by the Holy Spirit, we are not going to worry much about reaching the city so are difficult to reach. We will only make ourselves available. The Holy Spirit will bring us there. Sometimes we have a paradigm. I want to go there because I want to finish the work. No, it is God who will finish the work. This is the work of God. We are only instrument. Sometimes we are thinking that if I will not preach, the Lord will not come. Napaka-powerful naman natin. Madili natin ang coming ni Jesus Christ. We cannot delay or hasten the coming of Jesus Christ. But it is our privilege that we are called to participate in God's work of saving the lost humanity. We need to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Boldness to speak and preach the gospel. After you are possessed by the Holy Spirit, we have boldness. You know, I am not against any methodology that we are using. But you know, I was, I in some, I was assigned in Sambuanga. So I was part of the so-called the Al-Hanif. You know, there was an approach before the Al-Hanif. The problem with that, I realized with that Al-Hanif, because we are hiding our identity. We want to be identified. Of course, there is reason, because of danger. We went to Hulu, and then my godfather, Dr. Mo, said, Son, I will baptize you. I will give you a new name so that these people will respect you. What is your Muslim name? My companion said, you know, I am Abdul Nasir. Okay? I could not remember any other name, so I said, Father, my name is Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> Because Abdul is Serban. Jabbar is my favorite NBA player at the time. So I have a Muslim name. Okay. Huh? Sometimes it works. But you know, boldness is the result of the Holy Spirit. Hmm? Next. The Holy Spirit directed the work directed not only the personnel but also the work in the early church. The question and reflection is, are we still directed now by the Holy Spirit? Or we are 
contented with our plans and we are directing the Holy Spirit. We are the one directing the Holy Spirit. We plan and we pray that the Holy Spirit will bless our plan rather than pray that the Holy Spirit will give us the plan and will help us work out that plan from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convict and convert. It could be using you, using me, or using any other means. Remember when Jesus was here on earth and the Pharisees were so proud that they were children of Abraham and Jesus rebuked them. Do not claim that you are, a children, you are children of Abraham because I can produce children of Abraham from these stones. You know, God is not dependent on us. But we should be totally dependent on him in doing our work. I don't have any recommendation except one. We need to examine ourselves today. We are preparing to work in the ministry, evangelizing the city. The, re the examination says, are we willing to be used by the Holy Spirit or we are using the Holy Spirit? Hmm? Is the Holy Spirit using us? Or are intending to use the Holy Spirit. Thank you and happy lunch if you have lunch. Thank you very much, Pastor. Yes, after after this. To be sure that we are still under the control of the Holy Spirit, we'll only have two questions. Okay. okay. Any question? Any question? So you are now convinced by the presentation, huh? <laughs> yes, please. question or comment if no more I'll give the time to to uh, announcement yes 